What I'm going to look at this afternoon is a couple of antennas that come from a supplier down in Sydney, here in Australia, called Andrews Communications. Uh, now, before we start, I just want to say I've got no affiliation with Andrews. Uh, bought quite a bit of equipment from them, but uh, and, and always had successful transactions. They also do telescope stuff, some astronomy stuff, and I bought some of that off them as well. Uh, transactions have always been successful and quick. Uh, now, it just was the Wyong Hemfest, just this weekend just gone. And what I actually picked up was the antenna on the left, which is the X50. Uh, it's marketed as the Andrews brand, but what I've actually just discovered, and had suspicions, but actually discovered it's actually a, a Nagoya. Uh, if you've heard of Nagoya antennas, uh, I think they're actually called Nagoya Electronics. Uh, but anyway, I managed to spot some of these doing a bit of surfing last night to just try and uh, locate a different model that I owned, actually one of the X30 rather than the X50 as marketed by Andrews because uh, the X30 is actually 1.3 metres long uh, and this one's actually the X50 which is 1.7 it's a bit longer than I wanted it to because what I actually want to do is use that for a dual band uh, D-Star hotspot uh, now look forward to actually making a series on that <coughs> uh, successful or otherwise show the ups and downs, the challenges, and, and hopefully how it results in the end. But uh, uh, So ultimately this is probably the start of that series. This is the antenna that is for the purpose of uh, using with a D-Star hotspot. Once I get that all set up, I've got the, the node adapter on its way, uh, and I'm going to be setting up a, a laptop uh, to for that connection, and hopefully that all works well so I can use that with the HT. Uh, and from the car. The one on the right is the uh, GP... 15 ACS, which is actually a tri-bander. Uh, you can see the six-meter radial sticking up, sticking up up the side there. Uh, the the one on the left, uh, sorry, the X50 also has the radials. All these ones seem to have the radials off the bottom, tri-radial sort of, you know, either way. Uh, they're all identical, other than than length. Um, like I said, this one's a tri-bander, so this is uh, 6 metres, 2 metres, 70 centimetres. This one on the left is just a dual bander, so uh, 2 and 70. Had this one for probably about two years now, and I'm actually in the process of uh, just going through some maintenance. So pull that one down just to give it a clean, and I'm going to give you a look at it because I want you to see how well these actually stand up. Um, now these are also all uh, modelled after the Diamond brand antennas so you're pretty much going to find an equivalent model in the Nagoya or if you shop at Andrews here in Australia um, you're going to find these are equivalent to the um, diamond brands now the diamond I think it's also something 50 uh, and I do apologize but you'll be able to look at it just from seeing the specs um, yeah 1.7 meters long etc uh, dual band you'll, you'll find a matching diamond these are uh, considerably less than the diamond um, but from the reports that I've read from me here, it appear to be similar quality. So um, the reason I'm out here at the moment is I'm looking to get this hex beam. I've just dropped that down, uh, so it's only sort of you know, uh, I don't know four meters or something above the roof. Because I'm looking at just tidying up, going through all the contacts, giving it a clean, and then I'm actually going to extend that to the top of the mast, which is probably going to put it up about 30, 35 foot. Uh, and I've got a friend coming around. Here with the guy wires and uh, I've also noticed that the uh, the fan dipole uh, I think you can zoom in there you can see that rope that I've got that hanging on it's just holding on by a thread so going to tidy up the connections there as well get it all back up uh, put a couple of put some um, air chokes on because I'm getting a bit of interference coming through the TV uh, off the dual bander so I'll put that back up and then we'll be good to go. Anyway, getting back to the point, this is the one that's come down. It's been up for approximately two years. Now, typically, what you'll see is this attaches to the bottom of the antenna here. And as per one of the reviews for one of the diamond antennas that I've been looking at, uh, there's actually a screw hole there somewhere. Um, sorry, get the light. There is actually a screw hole there somewhere that uh, you put a bolt into that. Now. When I was looking at the reviews, I noticed somebody said, or a couple of people have actually said that that had dropped out from up there, and that was the only issue they had with the antenna. And that's exactly the same here. Luckily enough, that had actually dropped into the gutter, 
and so I've got that and I can actually uh, you know obviously stick that back in go and get a bit cleaner um, now this is just looks like some oxidization giving it a bit of a rub comes up pretty clean uh, and the same here um, give it a bit of a rub and um, she's coming up so the antenna itself uh, I'm gonna say you're still in perfect conditions the supplied brackets still excellent um, obviously these have a little bit of surface corrosion I could give those a clean up but at this point I'm not going to worry about them All right, everything here still seems to be in good condition um, yeah. uh, now the actual antenna itself just spin around here is all 100% Perfect. Um, the end cap here, still on, and you can see, uh, quite a good seal there as well. Let me see that can clean up if I wanted it to. Um, and so this one's a little bit different in that the end cap on the other one seems to have like some silicon or something around it sealing. Where this one doesn't, seems like a pressure fit. Um, but you can see from the two of them, not that much difference between the you know, brand new and the one that's been up for two years. So uh, yeah, at this point I'd recommend these. Um, been fantastic, relatively cheap. Uh, this one from Andrews is around about currently about 270. This one here on the left, uh, I, I paid 80. Uh, for this at the ham fest, but they actually have them for about a hundred dollars. So it was a $20 saving at the ham fest discount, you know, for, for the ham fest. Uh, but I have seen these, I think, from Nagoya, from a supplier I've located on uh, from, I think, the US possibly. It may even be Hong Kong, maybe sort of direct from over there somewhere. And I think you can pick those up for around about the $60 mark. So, you know, we're, we're talking a pretty good bargain. Go and have a look at the equivalent one of these, which I'll actually leave in the notes down the bottom. Go and have a look at the equivalent one of these in the Diamond. might be the Diamond 500. I think it might be something 500. Diamond something 500. Anyway, go and have a look at that. And that's basically the same antenna you're looking at. Have a look at the... I think it's... Maybe have a rating of about 4.8. Uh, so it's getting some pretty good ratings and pages and pages of reviews. Sorry about that wind. Uh, so an excellent antenna. And I don't expect that to be any different than this one here. So like I said, the one on the left is your X50, uh, or it's actually X50 ACS if you're looking at the Andrews website. Can't tell you the model number for Nagoya if you're looking direct up, but I think it lists for Diamond as something 300. I think you're, oh, sorry, something 500. It's a 300 for the 1.3 and the and the 500 for the um, 1.7 meter. Anyway, it's still banned. 4.7 dB gain on. Uh, 2 meters and 7.2 on 70 centimeters. Uh, the one on the right is the GP15 AC2, again, oh, sorry, ACS, and again, that's if you're um, looking to buy direct off Andrews. Uh, again, can't tell you the model number direct for Nagoya, uh, but so it's tri band, 6, 2 and 70 sems, and 3 dB gain on 6, 6.2 on 2, and 8.6. Uh, on 70 cents, so they're pretty big figures whether they're realistic or not. I don't know uh, But I can tell you that I get into a Gosford repeater uh, from my location it's Probably 50 some odd kilometers away uh, Again, I'll put that down the bottom and I, and I get into that reasonably well again uh, Hide is might with these sorts of things uh, So up as high as possible and that's what I'm looking to achieve this weekend as well. Now just have a look at that, this is actually the, the feed point for the antenna. Have a look at that connection. Uh, that is basically as clean as the day I got it. Save a couple of cobwebs. Uh, and that's basically because when you when you get it you put it together and you actually slide this sleeve, you slide your feed line, sorry, slide your feed line in there, plug it in, and then slip this up over the top put your bolt in and that protects your feed line um, and your connection point to the antenna 
from the weather and it does a bloody good job. Um, you might even consider throwing a bit of silicon or something around here, but at this point, two years on, you saw the condition of that connector, not required. It has to be a bit pedantic if you want to do that. So I'm going to give this a bit of a clean up, get this white sort of, I don't know, oxidation or whatever it is off it. Uh, and look, that's going to come up as, as good as the day I bought it. Really, really happy with these antennas. Um, and obviously that's why I've gone off and bought this one here. Now this X50 is a real nugget, and the X30 I imagine would be even more so, because it's shorter. Um, but you can see the condition here, or oh, sorry, the quality. Really good quality on these, and uh, yeah, for the price, I'm, I'm really, really impressed. Um, I'm looking to grab another one. Um, probably another one of these and I'll probably buy it direct from Nagoya um, uh, just for the use of portable work. Um, one thing you will notice and this is what kind of gives it away that it is actually a Nagoya is the, is the bagging, uh, the bag that it comes in. Um, find all your Andrews stuff, it's like an Andrews on there but I've bought stuff direct from sort of Hong Kong as far as HT whips and so on and this is exactly the same bagging that they come in and if you have a look online and you search for the Goya antennas you're going to find it exactly the same. Keep in mind if you buy them from overseas direct you're probably not going to get any warranty coverage um, you will obviously with Andrews as, as a direct supplier so again always been really impressed with them typically I have you know I might order it one day providing I get in before 11 o'clock or something like that uh, from Sydney to Newcastle I've usually got it on the doorstep the next day uh, at the very most two days later nice guys we're spending a couple of bucks with them but again no association with them uh, just a retailer that uh, I've had quite a bit of success with